I just wanna let you know that I'm always here to do my thing. That's the way I know. Come on. Got an addiction that you listen. You gon' find exactly what you miss. Come visit, you way too distant. Time goes by, but you still way different. I see that you grab my lesson. Cause I remember easy living. Like it was just the other day. It's been a long time since I've seen your face. You can come around when you need to. Oh, we gon' be happy to see you. And when you come through, all these people, they gon' love you. Dispensation, and in honor of your greatness, we offer these libations to your majesty. So last weekend, we were making about a 10 mile run from St. Petersburg over to Pine Key, which is better known as Beer Can Island. It's about a 10 mile run from here. It was pretty uneventful until we actually pulled out of our slip. And as soon as we pulled out of our slip, a big power boat pulled right in front of us. And I don't think the lady had any idea what she was doing because she, she put it in reverse and she backed right down on us. So I had to gun it to get around her. Uh, we probably only missed by about 20 feet. And I usually don't push the engine that hard. I didn't think anything of it until about 10 minutes later, I noticed some smoke coming out of the exhaust. Well, at the time I thought it was smoke. Looking at it later, we found that, that it was steam. Um, about halfway to Beer Can Island, about five miles out, the overheat alarm went off. And <laughs> we just shut everything down and uh, regrouped to figure out what we were gonna do. What we decided to do is, since the wind was in our favor, is to go ahead and sail back to St. Petersburg and just troubleshoot it the next day. So that's what we did. The, the, the wind was really good. We made about four knots coming back. So it was about an hour and a half sail. Um, we sailed past the breakwater, right into the hook by the, uh, by the airport. And we only turned the motor on for the last minute or so just to uh, get into uh, our row, our dock, and back in and shut it down. And tomorrow I'll take a look at it and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So here is the raw water pump. It is actually a pretty simple device until it breaks. <laughs> this one happens to have the paper seal and not the rubber seal. Um, this is the first time I've ever dealt with a paper seal on a water pump. So we'll see what happens. So the first task is to take a look at the exhaust elbow. This exhaust elbow looks pretty good from the outside, but then again, I really don't know how long it's been on the boat. So <clears throat> that could be the problem, or it might be part of the problem. I'll take a look at it. Depending on if it's clogged up or not, then I'll, I'll dig deeper into the system. What I forgot to film was replacing the impeller on the raw water pump. It was actually missing uh, one of the splines, so that was part of the problem. One of the most difficult parts of this job is just getting the bolts off, just because they're in such a confined space. I would suggest just taking your time. You really don't want to strip one of these, or even worse, break one off. Between these two pieces, there's a metal seal, and you're probably going to break it when you take it off. It's only about $5, so I would advise just going ahead and buying one of these before you even attempt this job. Alright, so here's what came out of... These were the top bolts, which were about two inches. Bottom bolts are significantly longer, and these are 12 millimeters. The hardest part of this job the wasn't getting the exhaust off the exhaust manifold. It was actually getting the exhaust hose free from the exhaust elbow. So what I ended up doing was just taking some Dawn dish soap and a fly hitch screwdriver and working it in there and eventually twisting it back and forth. It came free. Since the exhaust elbow wasn't that bad, I figured I'd go ahead and do the entire cooling system. This little valve is actually to drain the heat exchanger, but when I when I opened it up, it only trickled out, so I knew it was going to be pretty clogged. So my thought process was to go ahead and check the heat exchanger and give it a mechanical scrub, and come back later and hit it with some descaler. I also wanted to check the water pump, the sea strainer, and especially the hoses. Even though the hoses are only two years old, I had read that. A lot of people had issues with, I guess, the suction on the suction side of the, the raw water pump. The hose can actually delaminate on the inside and collapse. So on the outside of the hose, the hose looks fine. 
So when you open everything up, everything will look fine. But when you put it all back together, you still have a, a low water flow. Also on my setup, which didn't come stock with the boat, coming out of the heat exchanger, it goes up a couple inches and goes through an anti-siphon valve. Then it comes back down to the uh, exhaust elbow. So this is another area you'd want to check for, for scaling and buildup. On the top right of the front faceplate that covers the heat exchanger, the bolt is different. It has a nut and a bolt that goes through it. I'm not sure why, but I checked in a manual and it's actually a different part number just for that bolt. This is a strip one, so I have this special extractor I'm gonna try. Ugh. Damn it, sweet. Just a side note, I stopped by the MR dealership and I got a new bolt. It was only 81 cents. And another note is that the number that's stamped on the front of the bolt is the actual hardness of the material it's made of out of, not the actual size of the bolt. Oh, she's looking a little clogged. Let's see what we can do. I was surprised that the seal actually came off in one piece, and after I cleaned it up, it was still really supple, so I was able to reuse it. This just shows how bad the scaling really was on the end caps. I really have no idea when the last time this this was serviced. It was really easy to scrape this stuff out. It's it's just chalky. And this is just doing a flashlight check to see which tubes are still clogged. Here I'm just using an Allen wrench to clean out the cooling tubes. The whole goal here is just to break up the, uh, the scaling so water can flow through it. That way later when I use the descaler, it should dissolve the rest. Here I'm using a stainless steel brush to clean up the ends of the heat exchanger. This really did make a big difference. I'm just about ready to put it back together and this is a really important step to make sure the seals are very very clean. Just to make sure in the future I don't break any bolts off or they don't get seized, I usually just put a tiny, tiny amount of Atlantic coat on the bolts before I put them back in. When putting hoses on, I always use two clamps, but you can't always use two clamps. Sometimes the, the, the little barb that the hose goes on just isn't long enough. This is pretty straightforward. This is just using a BFS screwdriver again, and I'll just use it to tension the belt and tighten down the bolts. All right, so here's the descaler I'm gonna try. The, uh, when I did research on it, it looked like Barnacle Buster was the best type. However, when I was over at the uh, engine parts store, this is what they carry. They said it was much cheaper than uh, West Marine. And the reason that they use this brand is it won't stain your bilge. Holy cats, I was not expecting this. This is the descaler coming out. I basically just closed the seacock, opened up the sea strainer, and ran it through for about, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute, and just let it pickle for about a half hour, and it started the engine up and let it clean out. This stuff did, stuff, <laughs> this stuff did say safe, non-toxic, bio-based, and non-hazardous, right? I sure hope so. This really wasn't a hard job, and after about a minute, the uh, the water cleared up and the foaming was gone. So I guess it's job done. Come on.